Lord be with you. Good to be here with you. Um, welcome to Montauk Community Church's uh, Sunday online service here on this uh, last weekend of August as we prepare to head into the fall season. May God's peace be upon you and wherever you find yourself this morning, may you sense the presence of God in the midst of our worship together. A um, couple of changes coming in the next couple of weeks, not so much for the online services. They will remain as they are, but we will uh, next Sunday, Labor Day weekend, there will be no outdoor services um, or in gathered services, only an online service. And then beginning the following week, the 13th of September, we'll continue online. But we will also uh, be meeting outdoors still, weather permitting on the front lawn, but only one service, and that will be at 10 o'clock on Sundays, beginning on uh, September 13th. So it is, uh, it's good to be here with you and, uh, um, and gather as we do. Uh, we know that Christ's presence is with us through the work of the Spirit. So may you sense that, be strengthened, comforted, challenged, and moved by that presence. Beloved in Christ, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. For in this way, God's glory will be made known and all will praise God. Let us pray. O Christ of the hurting and heartbroken, O Christ of the least and the lost, O Christ of the fearful and forgotten, come close to us this day that we may come close to you. As you watched us with care at our soul's shaping, Look on us now with grace. As you blessed us with light at the sun's rising, shine on us now with love, that we may bear that love into the world in your name and to your glory. Amen. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, Jesus said. Lord of mercy, have mercy on us. You have set your way before us and we tremble to see it. It is not just the cost of discipleship we're afraid to bear, but also the weight of your claim and call on each of our lives. Your command to excel in love, rejoice in hope, and live peaceably with all your appeal to overcome evil with good. Who are we to live in such a way? We do not merit your confidence. Merciful God, forgive our fear and faithlessness. Help us to see what you see, to follow where you go, and to live in awe of your presence, which is our help and encouragement. And now, O oh merciful God, hear the silent confession that burdens each heart gathered in your presence. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, do not fear. God's grace is greater than our pretense. God's grace overcomes our shortcomings. God's perfection, our imperfections. So hear and believe the good news in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Glory be to God.
as we uh, turn to God's word, let us pray. Eternal God, grant that the word you speak this day may take root in our hearts and bear fruit to your honor and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the living word. Amen. Two readings this morning, both of them from the New Testament. The first comes from the epistles, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, chapter 12, beginning in verse 9. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Now outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, they shall heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And the second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Chapter 16, beginning in verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block for me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here today who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> it's not always easy being a follower of Jesus Christ in America. I don't mean that we suffer great persecution here for our faith in spite of what some might suggest. I mean, having a person kindly welcome you at a December store doorway and wish me a happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Uh, that's not persecution, at least it's not in my mind. Nor does being told that my particular name for God or my religious traditions, commandments can't be favored over everyone else's, either in school assemblies or public spaces, that's not persecution either in my mind. I believe, in fact, those kinds of arguments for persecution are insulting to the people of Christian faith and actually of all faiths around the world who have truly suffered for what they believe about God. Now, the challenge of following the way of Jesus in this country is rooted more, I believe, in challenges that lie within as opposed to without. Some of you know I was born on the 4th of July, and I've always been 
very proud to uh, share my birthday with the birthday of the nation that I love. I like to joke about how all the parades and the fireworks and the barbecues are all about me, but I, I know they're not. Now, I believe that the 4th of July is our annual reminder that we are a nation whose founding was rooted not in blood and soil, but in an idea and a promise, a vision first put forth on July 4th, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, including among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is the vision that is meant to shape the soul of a nation. And yet, it is a vision that we are ever living into and often imperfectly. And until we fully realize that vision, our national soul is never fully whole. And so periodically, someone or some group must come along to remind us of that initial vision, especially when we are not living up to it well. Four score and seven years after Thomas Jefferson wrote his words, President Abraham Lincoln reminded us on the battlefield of Gettysburg that our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, even there in the original writing, there was not full equality and full inclusion. And then after returning to the sacrifice that so many had paid on the ground on which he stood, Lincoln recalled us to that same vision. It is for us, he said, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they, the dead, thus far have nobly carried on. And then five score years later or so, 58 years ago yesterday, another man reminded us once again, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King spoke from the Lincoln Memorial. He said, when the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note, a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, still not full inclusion even there, all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And after reminding us that we have still failed to live out that vision, King continued in hope. I say to you, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the full meaning of its creed, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, he spoke that day. Well, it seems to me we find once again ourselves in a time when the fact that we have still failed to live into that vision is causing great struggle and division around the country. The stresses of a worldwide pandemic certainly haven't helped we too often respond to such times by positioning ourselves on opposite, of line, opposite sides of lines, which we often draw for ourselves. Elephant or donkey, red or blue, white, black, brown, all the other God-gifted variations of humanity that the Creator has bestowed, rich, poor, urban, rural, etc., etc. And we continue to be quite good at demonizing those whom we see on the other side of our line. And I think that times such as these present a particular challenge for those who would faithfully follow after the way of Jesus Christ. And this is where the challenge for the Christian becomes more of an internal struggle beyond the external struggles which are all around us. For how we respond to these challenges as followers of Jesus Christ matters. And it should look different than it would if we were not followers of Jesus Christ. You see, I believe that as a proud citizen of my country, a, really a true Yankee Doodle dandle, Dandy, literally born on the 4th of July, that my primary allegiance in life still 
does not lie with America first. The Christian's first allegiance is ever and always to God, revealed most fully in the person and work of Jesus Christ. And all else, all other allegiances we may have, as important and central as they may be, are and for the Christian must be subsidiary to that. It is not God and country. It is God, then country, perhaps. It is not cross and flag. It is cross, then flag. It is not Christ and America. It is Christ, then America. Anything less, quite frankly, is idolatry. And that's the challenge of followers of Jesus Christ in times of discord and division in the nations that they love to remain true to where our ultimate allegiance lies, to live and move and think and act in ways that honor the God we serve above all other servings. We now have not fully lived into the vision that is at the soul of this nation that we call home and that we love. It's a vision that is not blood and soil, but idea and promise. All are not yet treated equally. Some are still being left behind, pushed aside, beaten down. And we must remember that Jesus cares about that. Such things matter to God, as our holy texts remind us over and over and over again. We love God in loving our neighbor. Anything less is something less than fully loving God. The question of whether or not we actively seek to build a better, more just, and peace-filled world, it's not even really a question for the Christian. It's an imperative. We have no choice but to seek to contribute to that kind of world. We can never be fully satisfied with any world that is something less than that. The true question for the follower of Jesus Christ is, how will we carry ourselves in working for that better, more peace-filled, and just world? We are called to both be and to do differently because of whom we follow. We serve more than ourselves. We serve more than our tribe. We serve more than our country. We serve first and foremost the living God incarnate in the one we call the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ. And so in the midst of all the anger and the division and the turmoil that surrounds us on these sides, I invite us to listen once again to the words of Paul we just heard a few minutes ago, to truly listen and to think of them and think upon them again, particularly not so much when we're engaging with ones with whom we agree, those that we've placed on our side of the line, but particularly when we are engaging with relating to thinking about those whom we find on the other side of the line. Let us really listen to what Paul has said is the way of the Christian. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, but hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, but weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And do not repay evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. And beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it's written, vengeance is mine. I'll repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Those are not easy words to hear in a time of division and 
turmoil and struggle when we perceive and perhaps have enemies on other sides of lines. The challenging words of Paul, they remind us of where our ultimate allegiance is to lie. So however we engage these times, we must engage them first and foremost as followers of that Prince of Peace. And if we do that, if we do it faithfully, as hard as it is, the cost that it, we may bear because of it, we may just open ourselves to becoming instruments of healing in the world's brokenness. And we might actually move this nation of idea and promise that we love, that we call home, closer to living into the fullness of its founding vision. So peace to you. Amen. As we gather, let us uh, lift our hearts in prayer to God. Let's pray for one another. Let's pray for our neighbors. Let's pray for our enemies, our friends. Let's pray for those for whom we agree, those for whom we disagree, with whom we disagree. Let's pray for the church and pray for the world. In everything, O oh God, may we bring our thanks to you in our darkness and questioning, in our relief and rejoicing. In the assurance that you hold us in love, may we be able to serve others, holding out hope for a world in fear. May we be conscious of your divine footprint, matching ours as we travel through these uncertain days, bringing moments of joy and calm. God, you love all that you've made and the world and all its creatures. Your love gathers and enfolds all things. Your heart breaks when any part of your creation suffers. So, O oh Lord, as our awareness grows of your presence all around, may we be so attuned that we weep where you weep and our hearts break where yours is broken. In love, kneel beside us and patiently show us how to make things better. Unearth the wisdom that you created in us for the healing of the world. Affirm us and give us each a unique part to play in changing the world, in ushering in your justice and your peace. Living Lord, prepare to roll up our sleeves and work alongside you. We pray for world leaders, that they too may be filled with your wisdom, your love, and your healing power. We pray that their eyes and our eyes may be open to the need to find new ways forward and the possibilities that abound for honoring all creation and for building nations where all are valued, where all matter, where the economy is modeled on your divine economy. We pray for all who live in fear today and for those whose fears have been realized, those who mourn loved ones, those who see no light of dawn after darkness. We pray for those who've given up hope for a difference or better, May we hold out hope and faith enough for the world, and may we live in love. Awaken us, O God, to your truth and to your light, to all the opportunities we have of emerging from darkness fueled by new energy to make our world, our church, and our neighborhood beacons of hope that is realized in our serving you by serving one another. Your kingdom come, your will be done, God. And now, listen to the silent confession, O Lord, that rests upon each heart gathered here. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, our time together draws to a close, and as it does so, I invite you to just remember who you are, 
ministers in the name of Jesus Christ, loved by God, claimed by God, called by God to go out into the midst of the brokenness of the world with God's priorities, with God's love, with God's grace, and to be a healing presence, empowered by God's Spirit to be what you think you cannot be. And by the power of God, we can be what we're called to be. And so as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Good to be with you. Stay well, go in peace. We'll see you soon.